and we're recording. So in this video I'm going to talk through a few bits of a tutorial I set up called The Truth Will Set You Free and that I've put up on GitHub um, which is essentially introducing you to Gradle and to JUnit tests and to ex exploring code that someone else has written, namely me. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this part on my laptop, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clone the repository and uh, if we go in here we can grab uh, either the git version or the https version of the uh, repository URL and so I'm going to say git clone and I'm going to paste in that URL and I'm working on a Mac here and so it's got a nice bash prompt but you could do this from Windows um, git bash will let you interact with git at the command line as well and so now I've cloned the tutorial and if I have a look there is now a directory tutorial the truth will set you free and so if I cd into that and I have a look at what's in there well there is a readme file there is a builds.gradle there is an instructions.md and there is a directory containing a whole bunch of source code. And so this is a Gradle project, a Gradle Java project, following that typical Maven style source main Java, source test Java uh, layout. And if we pop back over here, well, the readme is what uh, GitHub tends to show on the front page. And there's a little bit of a, um, a spy story to this uh, where I have... Um, you, I, I, I've borrowed bits of Danger Man and, and The Prisoner as kind of inspiration for this. And so, you know, John Drake, has who, who was Danger Man in the TV series, he's recently resigned from the British Secret Service for reasons unknown. The following morning, he wakes in the mysterious place called The Village to discover that he's now called Number Six. And... Um, all the villagers have a number, number and one of the big mysteries is that nobody knows who are the villagers and who are the warders, who's a prisoner, who's a warden. And in this tutorial, number six decides that in order to leave the village and to enable all the other prisoners to leave too, he's got to find out who is number one. Surely this must be easy to find out. Number one's the only vi villager who would need to lie about his number. Everyone else would be perfectly willing to say, oh yes, I'm number 80, 87, oh yes, I'm number 34. But number one, the boss of it all, he doesn't want to say he's number one, he's got to pretend he's someone else. And so that is the the backstory that I've written into this little tutorial. And uh, the instructions.md uh, has a bit more in detail on the actual tutorial itself so it gives you a simple code base to explore and that you can model using class diagrams well we will encounter class diagrams properly actually a little bit later on um, but in this case it's just a little exercise in terms of if you can imagine just drawing boxes with the names of the classes and understanding the links between them oh yes this one's got a variable that references that one and it's got a little puzzle to solve in terms of why number six's plan fails and it has a secondary puzzle, which is to find out how could number six escape. And then it's got a little redesign task about how you would close that loophole. Um, now, the first thing it says to do is to read and run the tests. And so I could do this just from a text editor, but actually... IDEs are kind of handy. They help us to navigate our code and they help us to do things like run our tests from clicking the menus and rerun them at a, at a click of the button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across to IntelliJ IDEA and I'm going to say I would like to open a project. What project would I like to open? Well, it's in source code teaching cost 220 is where I happen to download it. Uh, 2017 and there it is. That's where I cloned it. Let's now open that up. And this is saying, well, this is a Gradle project. Where is Gradle installed? On your computer, William. And so I happen to have installed Gradle via Homebrew, I believe. Uh, let's go which Gradle. It's in user local bin Gradle. Mm, let's see if that one will work. And if I paste that in, what does it say as soon as I click out? Does it say it's happy with that? Actually, it seems to. It seems not to be complaining that that um, 
Uh, I think it might end up complaining that that is not a valid Gradle directory. Let's go. Yep. And here it says Gradle location is incorrect. Blast. The trouble is it doesn't just want the directory of the executable. It wants to be able to find all the other things that are in the, the lib and bin directory in the install of Gradle. Um, what you can do is you can just say use a Gradle wrapper task configuration. Um, if you're working from behind a firewall, this can have the, the problem that if, if there's a web proxy between you and the Internet, and you need to authenticate through the web proxy, it can fail to get out through the web proxy and get that Gradle wrapper. Um, but I'm not in that situation. I happen to be uh, in a situation where I don't need to authenticate through the web proxy. And so I'm just going to say use the Gradle wrapper um, and I'm going to click OK. And OK, it has now loaded this for me and it is uh, downloading the latest ver version of Gradle. It's downloading Gradle 3.3. Uh, I'm going to, um, so in a moment I will put this into presentation mode so the text is bigger, um, but it's also going to go and hide the uh, status bar at the bottom that is telling me that Gradle is still busy. And so I don't want to go into presentation mode until I'm reasonably confident that Gradle has been fetched, that it's done a bunch of stuff, because um, Although seeing that text fly by isn't terribly important, I don't want to miss an error uh, if that's OK. So it's still going. Gradle build. Uh, looks like it's nearly done. Uh, resolve dependencies. Compiling scripts into cache. Configure project. Build. Resolve dependencies for the test runtime. Um, it seems as though it's getting there. I think in a moment it will be fine for me to go into presentation mode. Um, still resolving a few dependencies. Popping out to the internet. And... Now it's up to scanning, uh, it's up to indexing, uh, which is now done. OK, it's now happy. I'm now going to go into presentation mode um, so that you can see this a little bit bigger. Right, now let us open some tool windows. Let us open the project on the left hand side. And there it is, and we can navigate the source. And of course, it looks, you know, everything's a little bit out of proportion because I'm in presentation mode. Um, it does look prettier when you're not in presentation mode. On the right hand side, there is a Gradle tool window. Um, and this here, uh, well, that blue button I would like to point out, that is the button to say refresh the Gradle project, reread um, build.gradle which is the, um, uh, the, the, the build file for this project, uh, which says uh, information about it, including what it depends upon and where to get those dependencies from. And uh, over here, there's some tasks. And if I expand build, I could tell it to do a Gradle build and then it will um, show me it uh, running a Gradle build. And you can kind of see it in this kind of UI format that IntelliJ has. And oh, it's taking a little moment. It's normally a bit quicker than that. That may be because I'm recording at the same time, of course. And let's just let that finish. Still running some tasks, running the tests, and OK, that's done. So let's now close that one. And uh, let's open a different window. And the window I'm going to open is the terminal that is built into IntelliJ. Uh, so where are we? Terminal. And so down here it will let me have a terminal and I can go Gradle build from the command line. I would encourage you quite often to do this from the command line. Um, generally speaking, I encourage students to, if you do things from the command line, you know what you're doing, you know what you're typing. Whereas if you do things from a menu and then the IDE changes and the menu changes layout, and you're kind of not quite sure what the IDE was helping with you versus what the underlying tool was. OK, and so that build has been successful, though I do have a bunch of warnings going on here. Those particular warnings are about Javadoc. Uh, so this is saying in my Javadoc uh, in village.java, let's go to village.java and it's saying, oi, Will, um, line 31, uh, for instance, there is no, um, uh, oops, sorry, I've opened test village, not village. Let's open source main village village and go to line 31 and here I have um, some code that I've written here's a method and it has a java.comment comment uh, but there is a there, there's a parameter p and it's a person and I haven't put in an at param 
in the Java doc comment to explain what that parameter is. So those are documentation warnings that it's giving me there. Okay, so I can run the tests from there. Another way that I can run the test is I can come down here and I can right click on test village and go run test village. IntelliJ uh, very kindly understands how to run JUnit tests and so can do those. Um, but again, I would encourage you at least to be able to do this from the command line. And here, um, here we have it has done a, um, it's run the tests and there's been a certain amount of printing things out. But on the left, we can see all these tests appear to be passing. Okay, so that is that part of it in terms of just showing that we can get it up in IntelliJ. Um, let's now uh, view, let's exit full screen but not exit presentation mode because I want to come back to the browser and so it says try the code, read and run the tests. The tests contain the story for today but don't worry too much about understanding the code yet. So if you uh, go down here and you go into test Java and you go into test village, um, <clears throat> the story has been put into comments along here. So we can see that we've set up um, this test and we've said well there's a person called John Drake and there's a person called number one and uh, before any of the tests run uh, we just reset things and we are going to clear the village um, just so that we know we're in a um, we're in a in, in, in a known state and if we click into village.instance.clear and so I can go to the source of that and we can see that does occupants.clear where occupants in village is a hash set um, of occupants and so the hash set well it's a set which means it will only count someone as being present in it once you add someone to it multiple times that's the same as adding it to uh, adding them to it once um, okay so that's just a little bit of the setup but if we then read down we can start seeing that we've got a few bits of stories written as comments above text texts so John Drake uh, happens to wake up in the village and first of all he tries to leave the village just by walking out so we can see John Drake enters the village and he wakes up and then he tries to leave the village and it won't work now the thing I want to point out is the test has passed the comment says it won't work what's going on here well when this test runs you'll see there's no assert in here instead I've said that this is a test where what I expect to happen is I expect an exception to be thrown I expect an exception of class unsupported operation exception to be thrown and so this test will only pass if the expected exception is thrown um, and if I happen to go to the source of leave village uh, well village.instance.leave throw new unsupported operation exception be seeing you you thought you were leaving the village well nope sorry be seeing you you don't actually get to leave the village unsupported operation the village does not support people just walking out of it okay we keep going John Drake's next plan is to find out who is number one number one's the only villager who will lie about his number to keep his identity secret so what Drake is gonna do is he's going to get all of the villagers to ask each other their numbers to write them down and then to compare notes and they're gonna he's gonna see you know who who's lied who is being inconsistent so what we're gonna do first is we are going to test that a notepad would help us spot someone lying about their number to us twice it would help us to spot um, if someone has previously told us uh, that their number is number six and then they have said that their number is number five and so in this test well again we are expecting it to fail we're expecting it to fail this time with a liar exception and so this is because the notepad let's go and have a look at notepad notepad contains maps of numbers to people and people to numbers so it's got a forward map of for, th for this number who's the person and a reverse map of for this person who's the number and when you add a person into the notepad and you give it the number and the person well first of all it goes to put them into the forward map 
and then it looks them up uh, in the reverse map and in this particular case um, the reverse map dot put if we look at uh, its return value its return value so I've just clicked into this and this is the source code inside the Java collections API um, the previous it will return the previous value associated with the key so in that reverse map when I put it in it will give me the previous number and then I can say well if that number is not null if they were in there um, and that number is different than the number that I've got now I'm going to call them out as a liar you told me previously your number was such and such and now you're telling me it's such and such yeah I've caught you you're lying about your number all right so let's pop back to the test I'm sorry for the silly voices so that seems perfectly reasonable now let's test in the next one that if we share some notepads that's going to help us spot someone lying about their number to two different people so what we're going to do is we're going to have a notepad and we're going to have another notepad and we're going to create a person and we'll see what mockito.mock is um, in a future tutorial but that uh, very quickly lets us create a mock person um, so just a mo at the moment imagine that this is a mock person this is a person for the taste of taste for the um, purposes of our test and we add that person with one number into one notebook and then we add them with a different number into the different notebook and then we copy everything from notebook one into notebook two we expect that copy operation is going to give us a liar exception uh, and so that is our test for see whether sharing notes will uncover uh, someone lying about their number and the test passes that 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 works share two people sharing their notepads that spots if someone is lying about their number all right well what we're going to do now john drake is going to put his plan into action but he doesn't want number one to know what's going on and so what number one does is well john drake is number six and so he other people don't necessarily know he's number six and so he just tells people oh can you help me i am trying to find for num number six and look um as number six always refuses to give his own number um you're going to have to ask because you know number six he, he says i'm not a number i am a free man um so as he always refuses to give his own number uh the villagers to try and find number six well they're not going to find him until they've asked absolutely everybody in the village and so all of these different villagers they're going to ask all of the different villagers what's your number and they're going to write them down in all the notebooks and then at the end if he can collect up all the notebooks surely he can find out who the liar is and so this sounds you know if this test succeeds then drake's plan succeeds in theory this should work and so what we've done is we've said in this test so the setup for our test here is let us put 300 people into the village and then john drake enters the village and number one enters the village and john drake if you recall uh, he never reveals his own number he always throws an, uh, an exception he says no, no no i'm a free man and um number one always lies about his number pretends that he's someone else and so what we, we've now got 302 people in this village and now john drake is going to go around and uh he is going to for every person in the occupants of this village he's going to ask them could you find number six for me please could you look for number six please i've got an important message about his family uh oh, sorry i've borrowed the i've got an important message about his family from another cheesy old series called blake seven uh never mind never mind um okay so now surely at the end if drake collects the villagers notepads he'll find one liar in their notes and so this test goes well he's gone and he's asked all of these villagers to ask uh, to go searching for number six and you can I'll, I'll leave you as an exercise for the reader go and see what p.find of six does 
And then he said, right, now surely if Drake collects the villagers notepads, he should now find a liar. And so what we're going to do, we're going to create a new hash map and we are going to say, well, we haven't found any liar exceptions so far. And for every person uh, in that village, we are going to get their shared notepad. Um, sorry, we're going to ask them to share their notepad with John Drake. We're going to ask them to copy the contents of their notepad into um, John Drake's notepad. And along the way, we hope that one of these is going to throw a liar exception. And we're going to catch that liar exception. And we are going to um, say, well, look, if the list of liars that we found so far um, doesn't already contain this person, we're going to put them in there. And we're going to say the last f lie found was this particular exception. So we've set it up so the code should be able to catch, um, uh, you know, more than one liar in there. But we're expecting there to be exactly one liar because we're expecting... Uh, that number one is the only person who is going to lie in this village. And so uh, at the end, what we're going to say is we're going to say, right, number one. And we're going to turn up to him and we're going to say, you are number one. And uh, the last lie dot get first, uh, last lie dot get second. And John Drake, these are the parameters that are being passed to you are number one. First number, second number, who is asking? And this is, if you like, the evidence. Uh, so the first number, you said you were 83, and then you said you were 97. And I'm asking you, you're number one. And um, down here, it's going to say, well, if I if I never said I was that, it's going to say, I, was, I never said I was 83. I never said I was 91 or whatever it was. And um, uh, and in in that particular case, uh, you know, if first number is not equal to that number, uh, if sec, uh, you know, he's he's gonna he's going to pretend. Okay, so you are number one. Uh, he's going to if the accusation is wrong, uh, that is going to go like so. Uh, and then it would throw an illegal argument exception saying, are you mad accusing an innocent villager like this? Medics, take this villager to the clinic. OK, so let's now pop back into the test code. Sorry for a moment. Willy explanation there. Uh, now, this here, this is a test. And uh, so this is an assertion in our test. And if the message fails, we want to say the plan won't work. Uh, what we are expecting um, is false and uh, we are expecting it to be false for the case of the village still containing John Drake. So we expect that from ask, from accusing number one we're going to get out of the village because he's not going to want um, someone in the village who knows who he is telling all of the other prisoners that's number one over there and he's going to get kicked out so that is the test that is the test of his plan and if we see down here so test escape attempt in theory well in theory this works and in theory at the end it says you've been kicked out of the village for discovering my identity okay so the plan should succeed well Little does he know, the wardens almost always fail his, foil his plan. And this test says, well, look, if this test succeeds, Drake did not make it out. And uh, this test escape attempt in practice, this will succeed if Drake didn't get out. Um, so down here, what happens at the end of test escape attempt in practice? Um, number one, uh, you know, we've got the stuff about uh, number one changing identity, etc. Uh, but down here, he goes through and he compares um, his, uh, you know, he, he looks in his notebook. He finds the first lie he can find. He goes up to them. He accuses of them of being uh, number one. And this assertion, well, this call should end up throwing an legal argument exception and so uh, instead uh, we should end up in here and Drake won't have been kicked out of the village and we get down to the assert equals and we're looking to see that 
the village contains John Drake still returns true. And if it doesn't, we would fail this with an with an error saying unexpected Drake escaped. And uh, the next bit of the mystery is, well, there's two bits of the mystery. One is to find out, OK, how did the wardens foil his plan? Because, you know, up here we have a test trying to show this test should succeed in theory. This should work. Um, but it didn't. This test down here, we tried it round it in practice and it didn't. What was it about the wardens that foiled his plan? Well, let me, you know, say if you want to have a look at this, pause the video and go and have a look. If not, let us go and spoil it for you. And let's go and have a look in the warden class. And well, what goes on? Well, when the wardens go and ask someone for their village, uh, for, for their number, um, they sometimes note them down correctly, but randomly, one twentieth of the time, um, they write them down unreliably. And here we've got it printing out a warden was unreliable and we see in here, well, a warden was unreliable. So the problem is that he's asked all of the villages to go and find number number six and write down the numbers and he thinks comparing notes we'll find out who lied but actually when the villagers some of them were wardens and some of them realized you know you know what i'm just gonna write, sometimes write a few mistakes in here and uh unfortunately then comparing notes he finds differences other than just number one lying and he picks the wrong person now i should mention that this test for you might fail it might be that he gets out because this is random this is you know uh, sometimes they write them down unreliably but it is perfectly possible that as it happens um number one will be the person that gets you know randomly picked as being you know through the discrepancies that are found from these wardens being unreliable still john drake finds the first discrepancy and it happens to be number one and he gets kicked out so this test to be honest, it's actually not always a great test because this test could fail even though the code is working correctly. Um, generally speaking, we want our tests to succeed if things are working and to fail if things are not working. Uh, we don't want them to be flaky, to succeed most of the time but fail on occasion even if things are perfectly valid. So there is a little bit of a problem uh, in this test as a test but hopefully it helps you to explore the code in theory. Now the second part of the challenge though was, you know, well okay, there is unbeknownst to you well, unbeknownst to him, a secret way of escaping the village. Now, to discover this secret way of escaping the village, you're going to need to have a look at how the village is implemented. And I'm going to suggest pause the video and have a look through the village to see if you can see how someone can escape from it, because um, it, it, it's a relatively common bug that you'll find in a lot of code, Java code. OK, and I'm going to assume that if you wanted to look for that, you will have paused it and had a look around. Now, the problem then is uh, that, OK, here we've set the occupants is a set of occupants and we've set it as being private. But if you ask to get the set of occupants and this is public, it will return you the set of occupants. But sets are mutable and sets have a method for removing things. So in fact, if he wanted to leave the village, uh, all he would end up needing to do uh, would be to go um, village dot instance dot get occupants dot remove of John Drake. And he's out. <laughs> Which is, you know, remarkably easy for trying to escape from this unescapable village. Um, so this is essentially a little bit of a um, a privacy leak, uh, an encapsulation leak, that in our village class we had encapsulated this as being a private member, but in the getter for it we are giving a mutable version of the occupants. We are giving a version of the occupants that can be changed. Uh, if we wanted to stop this, there's two ways around it. We could have, um, if you like, an immutable wrapper 
around our set that won't actually let you remove things. And that's one approach. Another approach is that, well, actually, what we're going to do is we're not going to set, give you the set of occupants that we use. We're going to copy this set of occupants into a new set and we're going to give you that set. So if you remove yourself from the copy, well, actually, you're still in the village because if you look at the, the set that the village has, you're still in there. Uh, but so that is kind of the, the, the secret little bug, the escape route from the village that's built in there um, into this particular exercise. Now, after that, there is a class diagram exercise. I haven't introduced class diagrams yet. We'll come across those later on in term. Um, but uh, if you would like an exercise in drawing class diagrams and have a look in, you know, get ahead of time, look up UML class diagram formats, uh, you could sketch out the relationships of these classes. Um, here, if you happen to be using Eclipse, which is a different IDE than IntelliJ, uh, you could install that in and it will let you drag the classes across from the code into the, into, uh, into a diagram. It'll generate a diagram for you. You can probably find plugins for IntelliJ that will do that as well. Um, later on, and we can come back to this, another topic we're going to talk about later on in the um, later on in the course is design patterns. And um, one of the exercises around design patterns, we'll meet this later on, is to uh, build a telephone exchange for the village um, that uses what's called a mediator pattern, which we will meet. So the villagers can send text messages to each other through the exchange rather than having to find each other at all. And that, of course, would rather thwart John Drake's plan, because when he said, could you find number six for me? They'd go, sure, pick up the phone, press six. Hello, is that number six? Um, uh, but that is another exercise that we will come across later. OK, so hopefully that's talked you through um, the story that's in the exercise. But really, this tutorial at this stage, um, it's about getting someone else's code in a Gradle repository, navigating your way around someone else's code, seeing there are some tests, being able to build the test, run the tests. And in this case, in particular, um, you're going to see tests where the success of the test is if the code within the test throws an exception. And that is the notation for that there.